الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد We are continuing the topic of Islam and governance. How far does Islam require or at least allow the Muslim community to be not only politically engaged but to manage everything in public life according to Islam, which means to use the Quran as its reference and to use the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, as its reference. And this is why we see the Prophet وسلم, as we have seen in the past couple of weeks acting like or playing the role of the governor, the political leader. So when the Prophet ﷺ went to Medina, he struck a Medina agreement, covenant, or constitution, which we are going to explain today. The purpose of this is not really to go over all the items and the background in details, but to establish the fact that not the Prophet, not even his enemies said, why don't you stick to your religion? You teach the Quran, keep teaching the Quran, but you have nothing to do with our public affairs. No one did that. No one objected to the fact that the Prophet وسلم, acted as the leader he was when he established the community uh, in Medina. So early on, to put the Medina as a whole society under one agreement for peace and justice for all, the Prophet ﷺ had to lay the groundworks and the principles on which this society ought to be governed. So the first point in the constitution of Medina is his establishment of his own authority as the leader who has taken the bay'ah, the pledge of allegiance and the pledge of commitment and obedience from the community in Medina. Definitely he didn't get this bay'ah of Islam from the Jewish community who were part of Medina. There were also Arab mushriks, pagans, idol worshippers. Also, they did not give him the bay'ah, but the bay'ah was given primarily and exclusively by Muslims. But this agreement was presented for the whole society to give equal rights, irrespective of whatever cliche you always hear, irrespective of color, tongue, religion, tribal affiliation, nothing. So the Prophet وسلم, set up and established the first ever human constitutional document that people would accept and by their acceptance they voted for the entire system on which the Medina is established as a state or society, a small one for that matter. This is a document from Muhammad, the Prophet وسلم, governing the relations between the believers and Muslims of Quraysh and Yathrib, and those who followed them and joined them and struggled with them. So this agreement, the first item of it is that it is an agreement among the Muslims first, then that they are one community in, in fact, the translation is not my translation, so I will have to work it out. This is not to the exclusion, but it is 
as an ummah amongst other people. That is not exclusion, but it is to establish them as a community with its own religious, ideological, and thought background. So they are one community, one ummah. And the Quraysh immigrants, according to their present custom, shall pay the blood wit within their number and shall redeem their prisoners with the kindness and justice common among believers. So now he is incorporating the immigrant Muslims who came from Mecca, that they are also part, but they take responsibility. They collaboratively pay back the ransom for any one of them. So they become a community that is part of the Medina community, but they take responsibility. Why did the Prophet ﷺ talk about the immigrant Muslims as different or separate from the Medina Muslims, the Ansar Muslims? It is because they have their own customs and they have their own traditions. And in the beginning of this uh, constitution, the Prophet ﷺ did not want to force hand everybody to what is to be called the Islamic customs. So he let everybody use their own background customs and habits until they get integrated as a whole community. So they pay the ransom for any of their captives according to their norms and according to the justice known amongst the believers. Then he lists all the tribes of Medina. Banu Awf, Banu Al-Harith, Banu Sa'ida, Banu Jathm, Jashm, Banu Najjar, and many others as also party to this constitution, which means they are to be committed to this constitution. Uh, Bani Awf, according to their present custom, shall pay the blood wit or the ransom they paid in heathism, which means during the days of Jahiliyyah. Every section shall redeem its prisoners with the kindness and justice common among believers. The Bani Sa'ida, Bani Harith, and Bani Jusham, and the Bani and Najjar are likewise. So every tribe that has an agreement with other tribes those agreements were to be held up according to this fresh constitution. The same applies to Banu Amr ibn Awf and Banu al Nabit and Banu al Aws. All of them, every group, every tribe will have to live up to their own culture and customs and they need to abide by those established agreements. Also, Believers shall not leave anyone destitute among them. Now it is the believers as a whole community. Now it is not tribal. When somebody is poor, it is a society who needs to chip in and support. Shall not leave anyone destitute, which means very poor, among them by not paying his redemption money or blood wit in kindness. A believer shall not take as an ally the freed man of another Muslim against him, meaning that no one should enslave anyone against his will. There will be no enslavement anymore. And this is a very essential item in this constitution, that a free man should never be kidnapped and sold as a slave or used as a slave. The good-fearing believers shall be against the rebellious or him who seeks to spread injustice or sin or animosity or corruption between believers. The hand of every man shall be against him even if he be a son of one of them. This is a very important way of managing the society to establish justice. That corruption, mischief, killing, attack, animosity, rumors, innuendos, anything that breaks down the ranks of society will have to be met by both resistance and correction by the society as a whole, but primarily by the group where the person belongs. 
even if it is one of them. This is very important that every tribe, every family will hold their people to that standard, the standard of righteousness and not allow anybody to go astray in terms of social, uh, criminal or aggressive activities. A believer shall not slay a believer for the sake of an unbeliever, nor shall he aid an unbeliever against a believer. This is, this un, is to be understood only in light of the previous point, that the previous point establishes that no one, not a believer, not anyone else, should be allowed to spread mayhem, chaos, killing, mischief, or murder, and go unattended. Then it says the believer should never kill another believer to help a disbeliever, nor should uh, he aid an unbeliever against a believer. In other words, Muslims have to stand together as a community against those who attack them from any other group so that everybody is put on alert that if you attack a Muslim, a member of this community, the entire community will not help you and will stand to support their own. So that this is like saying what the Quran says, وَأَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةِ وَمِنْ رِبَاطِ الْخَيْلِ تُرْهِبُونَ بِهِ عَدُوَ اللَّهِ وَعَدُوَكُمْ This is a deterrent disciplinary measure to let uh, and put on notice all those who are not Muslims in the community that you don't take advantage of a Muslim because he is alone. Don't kill him, don't hurt him, and if you do, don't expect the Muslims to stand with you. But it is not a license and it shouldn't be understood to the opposite, which means that a Muslim should support another Muslim for injustice or wrongdoing against a non-Muslim. That is not, the opposite is not true. That only is talking about a non-Muslim attacking a Muslim unjustly. God's protection is one. The least of them may give protection to a stranger on their behalf. Believers are friends one to the other, to the exclusion of outsiders. Again, that only applies if there is an outside attack or aggression against a Muslim or Muslims as a whole. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he taught the Prophet, al-mu'minuna wal-mu'minat, ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd, they are closer to each other than all else. The constitution here is clarifying this issue and how it works for the disbelievers and the pagans. To the Jew who follow us, or the Jew who follows us, belong help and equality. He shall not be wronged, nor shall his enemies be aided. Now, that extends the protection not only that the believer will protect his fellow believer, but he will also protect his fellow member of the whole society irrespective of his faith. So if he is a Jew, the, the protection extends to also cover him by Muslims, which means they will put their blood and money to defend a Jew if he is wronged. The peace of the believers is indivisible. No separate peace shall be made when believers are fighting in the way of Allah. Conditions must be fair and equitable to all. Meaning that if the Muslims give an agreement of peace, the other side they agree with is going to receive peace from all Muslims, not just from a group that gave him the peace agreement. So peace is not uh, divisible. And when the believers are fighting in the path of Allah, they will not break down and some of them will give peace to the enemies during the war. 
that is not going to be acceptable. Conditions must be fair and just and equitable to all, which means all members of society will be treated justly. In every foray, a rider must take another behind him. So every time there is a battle that Muslims are going out to fight back or defend the Medina, people will cooperate that everyone who has a, an extra ride, he will offer this to anyone joining the fight to defend the Medina. Uh, the believers must avenge the blood of one another shed in the way of Allah. And this is very important. If a believer is killed in the battle, then the believers will carry on his financial responsibilities after him. If he has debt, if he has family, the believers will take care of that. The God-fearing believers enjoy the best and most upright guidance. No polytheist shall take the property of person of Quraysh under his protection, nor shall he intervene against a believer. So a polytheist or a pagan, a mushrik, uh, has no right to give protection to anyone uh, in, uh, of Quraysh or any soul in Quraysh and does not offer protection, which means the Prophet ﷺ is canceling the pagans' former culture of protection and extended protection to one another against the Muslims. Whoever is convicted of killing a believer without good reason shall be subject to retaliation unless the next of kin is satisfied, meaning the next of kin of the victim with blood money, meaning to pay back uh, ransom. And the believers shall be against him as one man, which means they will rally all of them against this person, and they are bound to take action against him, the one who attacks and kills uh, a believer uh, willfully and deliberately. It shall not be lawful for a believer to hold by what is in his document, in this document, and believes in God, and the last day to help an evildoer or to shelter him. Some people, whether they were immigrants or otherwise from Medina, uh, they have relatives who are not Muslims. So this item, this article, precludes protection for any one of the relatives who attack a believer or attack the Muslims in Medina or attack anyone. The curse of God and his anger and wrath on the day of resurrection will be upon him if he does. And neither repentance nor ransom will be received from him. He will not be able to escape the punishment of Allah. So even you are a believer, even you live in Medina, even you fight with Medina, but you cannot give protection to anyone who is fighting against the Medina society, even if he is a relative. Wherever you differ about a matter, it must be referred to God and to Muhammad. That establishes the reference point. The reference point for judgment in Islam is to refer it to Allah and to refer to the Prophet. As we mentioned in the beginning of this series, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If you dispute any matter, refer it to Allah, refer it to the Messenger of Allah, if you truly believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. The, Zoo, the Jews shall contribute to the cost of war so long as they are fighting alongside the believers. Look at this condition now. The believers are financing all the war of defense to defend the Medina. But if the Jews were coming to join them and fight, which they are obliged to do that, they cover the cost of their joining the fight. Why? Because 
the Medina community is one community. When you defend the Medina, you're defending everybody. If Muslims are to be defeated, the Jews will be run over and vice versa. So everybody, they need to cover their side of the cost for the war. The Jews of Bani Auf are one community with the believers. The Jews have the religion and the Muslims have theirs. This is a very important element that establishes the freedom of religion and the protection of religion and the protection of practice of religion. Way before any convention or any organization, we're talking more than 1400 years. We're talking about the first uh, societal constitution and covenant by which people live. That the Jews are a community of faith and their faith and their practice of their faith and their faith institutions are to be as protected as the Muslims. The Jews have their religion and the Muslims have theirs. Their freedom, uh, their freedmen and their persons except those who behave unjustly and sinfully, for they hurt both themselves and their families, meaning that only if individuals in that community, the Jewish community, do anything in violation of the law, like murder, mischief, or corruption, or anything uh, uh, by way of aggression, as individuals, they get the punishment, but not the entire community. And that is as fair as it can go. We remember after 9-11, not only the entire Muslims in America, but the entire Muslim community worldwide was subjected to rumors, innuendos, casting doubts about our humanity and our intentions and our role and our peaceful nature. Not only that, but also doubting our religion itself. Even though everybody in the political arena at least knows that Islam is a religion of peace, but the mayhem after 9-11 and the paranoia it resulted in caused everybody to panic and act irrationally. But Islam establishing the rule that if someone does something, it is their individual responsibility. Exactly like what the Quran says, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى no soul will carry the sin of another soul. If you commit a crime, your brother should not be prosecuted or persecuted. If you commit a violation, they don't take it your neighbor, they take it you. This is what it should be also in other matters. The same applies to the Jews of all the tribes as listed here. Bani Najjar, Bani Al-Harith, Bani Sa'idah, Bani Jushm, Bani Al-Aws, Tha'laba, Jafnat Batn min Tha'laba and Fushum, Bani Shutayba, Mawali Tha'laba, and Bitanat Yahud, which means any subset of the Jewish community are going to be subject to this agreement, which gives them protection against malicious persecution or prosecution of a whole community because of the crime of a few or one person. The same applies to the Jews of Bani Najjar, Bani Harith, Bani Sa'ida, Jusham, uh, Al Aws, and Tha'laba, and Jafna, a clan of the Tha'laba, and the Bani uh, Shutayba, all of the subsets of the Jewish community who are Jewish subsets or subclans, they are uh, extended the same protection under the same article. None of them shall go out to war save with the permission of Muhammad, but he shall not be prevented from taking revenge for a wound. If a Jewish person is attacked and he is wounded and he engages in self-defense, that is allowed. But as a whole, as a community, they shall not engage in a war with a Medina outside party without the permission of Prophet Muhammad because it engages the overall safety and security of Medina as a whole. But if somebody wounds him, then he has the right to self-defense. 
He who slays a man without warning slays himself and his household, unless it be one who has wronged him, for God will accept that. Which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept a reaction and an action of self-defense is a reaction to attack and aggression. But he would not accept or support an act of aggression, initiating aggression against someone else. The Jews must bear their expenses and the Muslims their expenses. Each must help the other against anyone who attacks the people of this document. So if you sign as party to this Medina society that is being established as a constitution for all, then you will be supported by the overall treasury if needed. They must seek mutual advice and consultation. And loyalty is a protection against treachery. A man is not liable for his allies mislead misdeeds. The wronged must be helped. If someone gets attacked, then all of the people in Medina will extend a helping hand to fight against the attacker or the aggressor. The Jews must pay with the believers so long as war lasts. Whenever there is a war against Medina, every tribe, every clan, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, will have to contribute to the defense of Medina until the war is over. Yathrib, which is the old name of Medina, shall be a sanctuary for the people of this document, which means anyone who signs, Jews or otherwise, Muslims or otherwise, anyone who signs this agreement and lives under the agreement of this constitution, they are given sanctuary. Their money is protected, their persons are protected, their families, their businesses, their homes, they are to be protected under this agreement. Of course, maybe someone reading this or hearing it, they would say, but why did later on the Prophet Sallallahu kicked some tribes of the Jewish community out of Medina? And in some cases, he forced them out and killed some of them. Well, it is because they were in violation of the item of treachery that no one and no community definitely should uh, do anything that constitutes treason to the entire society. And in those cases, the Jewish community leaders, unfortunately, they aided, abetted, and encouraged the pagans coming from Mecca to rally and come to attack the Medina. And they refused to join the Prophet ﷺ in defense against those attacking from Mecca. A stranger under protection shall be as his host, doing no harm and committing no crime. So your neighbor is like yourself. You can't hurt him and you cannot commit any sin or harm against him. This is irrespective. It was not the language of this time to make that cliche, irrespective of faith, religion, color, tongue, all of this. It was not necessary. People knew each other by name. So the clear text does not preclude anybody, which means it includes everybody. Remember, this agreement was written in Arabic, not in, uh, in any other language. A woman shall only be given protection with the consent of her family. A woman shall only be given protection. Protection means when a woman runs away from her family for whatever reason, in violation of their customs, the Muslims cannot include her in protection. They will have to communicate with her family. And a Muslim in this community, in the Muslim community of Medina, cannot extend a protection for a woman that does not belong to Medina without the consent of her family. Why? So that prostitution doesn't spread and uh, black male marriage does not happen and exploitation of women does not happen and all of the corruption that comes with such a position. <clears throat> 
If any dispute or controversy likely to cause trouble should arise, it must be referred to God and to Muhammad, the Apostle of Allah. Allah accepts what is nearest to piety and goodness in this document. So anything of dispute that happens, then people, anybody in Medina who signed on this document, they can use the Quran or which is the reference to Allah and they can use the Prophet وسلم, or his position or his statement or this document to establish their rights in Medina as citizens of Medina. So if there is any dispute inside the Medina, the reference is Allah, which means his book, or the messenger, which was among them, or his sunnah, after he had departed. And those are the references to resolve disputes. And the last statement, that Allah will accept piety, the nearest to piety, and goodness in this document means if there is anything that anyone regards as evil or bad, then this would not be acceptable to Allah. So this is an invitation for people to review before they sign, before they sign this agreement. You know when you get to sign an agreement, they tell you read it, right? This is an invitation for people to read the agreement and pinpoint if there is anything they see as evil or bad and point it out because Allah would not accept any parts that's evil in this agreement. Quraysh and their helpers shall not be given protection. Why is the Prophet وسلم, singling out Quraysh and the disbelievers, the pagan idol worshippers of Mecca? It is because they declared war on the Muslim community years before the Hijrah not only after they went to Medina, years before the Hijrah, they were fighting and killing and persecuting Muslims, irrespective of anything, whether they are relatives, they work for them like slaves or servants, or they are neighbors, they just persecuted anyone who doesn't have a tribal backing. So they declared war, and the war declaration, uh, may I remind you, came in Surah Al-Anfal, where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُ بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And remember and behold, as the disbelievers conspired against you to either kill you or silence you or to kick you out. That is the conspiracy. This is a declaration of war by Quraysh against the early Muslim community in Mecca before even they became a bigger community in Medina. So that's why the Prophet Sallallahu in this agreement is saying, they are our enemies, anybody signing here, he is obliged to stand with us against them and never extend any protection by tribe or group or individuals to any Qurayshite, even though Quraysh is his own tribe. But this is not about relationship. This is not about kin and family. This is about the security of the society in Medina as a whole. The contracting parties are bound to help one another against any attack on Yathrib. It's understood. If they are called to make peace and maintain it, they must do so. And if they make a similar demand on the Muslims, it must be carried out except in the case of war in religion, war that targets the Muslim's religion. So if it is a fight over some property or something, not everybody will be required. The Muslims can take care of it. But if it is a war against the security of Medina, or against the deen of the Muslims, because the agreement gives the protection to the deen of the Jews and all others. So the agreement has to spell out also that by uh, extension, the Muslim's religion also ought to be protected by the rest of the society as well. Everyone shall have his portion from the side to which he belongs. So everyone who gets a share of anything, they divide it among their own tribal group or uh, clan. The Jews of Al-Aus, the Jews of Al-Aus, 
their freedmen and themselves have the same standing with the people of this document in purely loyalty from the people of this document. Loyalty is a protection against treachery, which means treason. He who acquires, ought acquires it for himself. God approves of this document. So here is somewhat a concluding remark regarding this document, that the extension of protection is not only to those who are Jews, but for their servants and their slaves and their workers and anybody who signs with them on the agreement. So anyone signing as part of the Jewish community, even if they are not Jews, they will be protected under this agreement. And whether it is goodness or evil, each of those are earned by individuals, which means the responsibility of evildoers is an individual responsibility. This deed will not protect the unjust and the sinner, the man who goes forth to fight, and the man who stays at home in the city is safe unless he has been unjust and sinned. God is the protector of the good and the God-fearing man, and Muhammad is the apostle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this protection is not going to be extended to wrongdoers, aggressive people, or people who unjustly take positions or properties of others. So this, as you could see, is the text of the oldest historic document that could be regarded as a societal and nation's constitution. And it has all the items that offers all the principles that people today call democratic principles of freedom of worship, freedom of travel, freedom to do business, freedom to do whatever you want so long as you don't attack others, you don't infringe on, on the rights of others. All of these principles are included in this document. The point behind presenting this document to you is to establish the fact that the Prophet was a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but he was a community leader, he was a community organizer, he was a governor, he was a leader, a military leader, he was a political leader, and so must every Muslim who has a role to play in his society to contribute to that role and never accept the claim that you either be a Muslim or you engage in politics that you either rule by Islam and leave aside politics and policies, or else if you want to handle policies, then leave out Islam. That is not the position of the Muslim. The Muslim's life is not divisible. You cannot divide the Muslim's life into a spiritual life, a political life, a social life, economic life, and so on and so forth. Life is conclusive and Islam as a way of life and guidance is comprehensive and encompassing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us what is Islam and how to live it. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladheena astafa وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد I would like to urge you to please take a copy of this or watch it on our YouTube channel Dar al Hijra YouTube channel with your family so that your children especially high school and college kids would know what Islam offered the world before Europe and America were born. Zakum Allah khair. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. Wa afina fi man afayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa qina wa sarif anna sharra ma qadayt. Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bi baynana wa bayna maasiyatik. Wa min taatika ma tuballighuna bihi jannatak. Wa min al yaqini ma tuhawunu bihi alayna masaib al-dunya. Wa matti'na Allahumma bi asma'ina wa abusarina wa quwatina ma ahyaytana. واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا 
ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها يا مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين اللهم أحينا على الصراط المستقيم اللهم أحينا مسلمين وتوفنا مسلمين واحشرنا مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين وأعلي بفضلك يا رب كلمة الحق والدين اللهم جنب المسلمين في كل مكان البلاء والفتن وسائر المحن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم اختم لنا بخاتمة السعادة أجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولجميع أموات المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة